What's up guys, back at it again with another YouTube video. And this one centers around um, the featherweight division and UFC 266, UFC 251 all the way back to last year and all the way back to Holloway versus Volkanovski won in Las Vegas. Now, Alexander Volkanovski last couple weeks ago fought Brian Ortega, won the fight. People talk about the commentary constantly. It's fine. It's what we go through. But I saw Alex on Ariel's show and said it felt like almost we were rooting for Brian Ortega. We weren't. Not, I wasn't. Felder wasn't. Anik wasn't. We were just calling the fight as we saw it. I think it's an even bigger compliment to Volkanovski that the story of the fight becomes Brian Ortega surviving due to his dominance. That's how good... The champion looked. Well, when the champ says something like that, now I pay attention. So I reach out to Alex, text him, tell him that if we did him a disservice, I apologize. I'm a big man. He told me it's all good. Mate. That's what he said. Great guy. Uh, was in phenomenal shape. Fought a beautiful fight and won. Brian Ortega showed how tough and durable he is because of what he went through, not only this fight, but also the Max Holloway fight. Brian has had two title fights, and in those title fights, he has not fared very well. When you have an athlete and they speak up, people follow. Alex and I, great. I have the utmost respect for the champion. I could not be happier that he is now starting to get his roses. People are starting to show him the love that he so justly deserves. After having two wins over Max Holloway, beating Jose Aldo, and now defending his title against Brian Ortega. Coach starts talking. <laughs> Coach Behrman. Boyfriend and girlfriend? Like, come on. Sure, Max is my buddy. He's a great friend of mine. Is Max Holloway the best featherweight of all time? Absolutely, I believe this. Could Max Holloway have gotten a decision in the second fight? Absolutely. But can we live in a world where Alex got it? Sure. Could I live in a world where it's one-to-one? -one? Sure. But the call is ex-boyfriend and girlfriend. Why? Because we're friends, we're chummy. And to make the point of my commentary, setting a narrative, Coach specifically pointed to UFC 251. Coach, when you speak about a man in his job, you open yourself up for a rebuttal. Here is my rebuttal, Coach Eugene Behrman, who I believe, in my opinion, is a genius. Dan Hooker looked phenomenal a couple weeks ago. You guys know what I thought of Alexander Volkanovsky's performance. Israel Adesanya is an absolute savage. It's crazy because Coach said by his commentary, but I have never been panned more violently for being biased then when Izzy fought Jan Bohovic, nobody said nothing there. So is it okay when uh, people are speaking in your favor, but not on the opposite side? Because the story was, I thought Izzy did a lot of setups brilliantly against Jan, never took full advantage of it. But I was paying for it. Universally, one of the worst times that I've dealt with it uh, so far. I thought I did Volkanovski justice. I thought we all did. Thought we gave him his roses. But Coach, you specifically pointed to UFC 251, where you said, and I'll quote you here, you said, Coach, it's always difficult. The ultimate problem was you had the fraternity against Volkanovski. You had two chump chum commentators, Daniel Cormier, Max Holloway, who I think they used to be in a relationship or something back in the day. They're like ex-boyfriend, ex-girlfriend or something. They love each other. Then you had Cormier building this rhetoric that how Max should have won it, and then Dana jumping on it. But go back and watch the fight. Go back and seriously study that fight. Alex fought beautifully. Coach, I said it time and time again. His adjustments on the fly is what allowed for him to win that second fight. He adjusted brilliantly. I mean, I spoke about it in the buildup, how good he is at making these adjustments and ensuring that he's victorious. He's brilliant. You're brilliant as a coach. 
But a lot of times when coaches start to get a little shine, they start to listen to the chirping. As a coach, you got to have one blinders because all you can focus on is the athletes. And guess what, coach? Your athletes do it at a level that nobody's doing it right now. You got two champs. You got Dan Hooker who may be in a number one contenders fight against Islam Makashev. You're brilliant at what you do, but then you tell me that I'm learning the game while commentating. Coach, I did it. I lived it. I lived it. For me, I don't understand when everybody became so sensitive. Fought in championship fights, and there were times where maybe I didn't agree with something the commentator said, but I have never said anything to Joe Rogan, Mike Goldberg, Dominic Cruz, or anybody else that have called any of my fights. John Anik? Nobody. Because none of that matters. What matters is inside the, the eight sides of that octagon, and in between those eight sides, guys from City Kickboxing are doing it at a tremendous rate. For me, to call me and Max boyfriend and girlfriend, it's crazy. Sure, Max is a dear friend of mine. I believe he's the greatest featherweight of all time. But I do understand that your guy is on his way. But all I care about is seeing the two greatest featherweights right now fight again. I understand Max has a very tough task in Yair Rodriguez. But if he does what he's supposed to do, as so many people expect, we get to see him and Volkanovski fight again. That's fun. That, to me, is what's important. Nothing else really matters. Coach, talk to me. If you feel I don't do your guys a serve, the, I do them a disservice, tell me. I'm easy to talk to. I won't get mad. I won't get offended because you're a pro. I respect what you do. I respect how you prepare these guys, how they're in great shape. They're so technically skilled. They're just well-rounded fighters. I respect them. We've always been cordial when we see each other. You're a respectful man. But opposed to going there and talking to those people, tell me. It's fine. I can deal with it. But when you do go there, now it allows for me to have a rebuttal. And here's mine, Coach. Coach, I wasn't there at UFC 251. DJ Mikey B did that fight, Coach. Michael Bisman called that fight. I was in Gilroy, California, sitting on my couch with my team before I fought Steve A for the third time. And we were all sitting there scoring the fight, not knowing who won. But the fans are all saying Max Holloway won. It's not the professionals. If Max got the decision, I'm watching that fight with Max Holloway colored glasses on. Makes me happy. Max didn't win that fight. It sucked to see my friend lose. Because I know how much he put into it. But Volkanovski got the decision. After the first fight, Volkanovski started nice early with those leg kicks. Max built his way back into the fight. Two to two going into the fifth is what I said the fight was. And when you go back and look at the scorecards, it showed that it was two to two going into the fifth. So are we really not doing these guys service, doing them justice, or are we looking for things? Because we're listening to the noise from the outside. I just want to see these two fight, coach. They're the best. Your guy's the best. Your guy's the man right now. Don't listen to that stuff. Talk to me. It's fine. And I'll see you on Fight Island, coach. We'll be very, you know, you're a great man. You're very smart. You're a genius. You have built champions out of Australia. I mean, we didn't get those very often before. You're building them. So we can talk and guess what? Maybe you'll help me in the next fight. Or maybe I can tell you how I'm viewing these things. But I'm telling you, Alexander Volkanovsky fighting against Brian Ortega and Brian surviving becoming a, bit of the, becoming a bit of the story is the ultimate compliment to your guy. Because that's telling you how dominant he is over one of the best fighters in the entire world. That's my rebuttal. UFC 251, I wasn't there. So I could not have built a rhetoric against Alexander Volkanovsky. On that night, I wasn't a part of the fraternity. I was home. I was in Gilroy trying to win a third fight against the greatest heavyweight of all time. And I didn't get it done. But I wasn't there. So all I care about 
is as pros, you and I, we talk, and we don't talk to these people. Because when we talk to these people, it's easy for them to twist the words. See me right here talking directly? Can't twist what I'm saying. Because I'm saying, nobody's writing an article. It's just me talking about it. All respect, coach. I have no problem. No problem whatsoever. I admire your work. But boyfriend and girlfriend? Hmm. Seems a bit harsh, Coach Behrman. See you in Abu Dhabi. We can talk about it.